stars in the film. So thank you very much. Lisa Peddle. John Peddle, ladies and gentlemen. Where you can laugh 
because they, they are fun. Yeah. Nolan can be a pretty funny guy. Yeah. Anyone who knows him. Let me ask you about the cooperation of people. Uh, and there, there are a lot of people involved and a lot of people on screen. Did you both get the cooperation of everyone you wanted when you were looking to, to work on this one? Yes. Um, we called a lot of them. And after we expected the project, the answer was yes. And uh, I think that the most important answer was check times because when he told us yes, I will do this, uh, for us it was a sign that this project was really an important part. That's great. Bill, how were you involved in recruitment? Did you not have a filming or anything that's entirely Bruno and junk food and Tomasa? Uh, they kind of approached me here at the end and said, hey, you said something about narrating this many years ago, uh, we might take that off. Yeah, so I was kind of in at the end when the schedule was very tight. Um, unlike getting ready for a CES show, I did have Christmas Eve and Christmas Day off, so thank you for that, right? <laughs> It was a mad rush at the end. Have you ever done any mad rush? You're not saying really like that. I make videos for half a day, but I've never, and I like talking, you know, so it seemed like a natural mix at that point. Yeah, that good. It did change the way our, our family lived for a while. I couldn't have a fire in the fireplace every three days. You know, just the crackling sound we get into the microphone and then things like that. Yeah, yeah. Now, what's the plan from here, Bruno? Because this is this is the world premiere of my life. The nice the, the first public screen of the film. So uh, we're, we're just delighted that you chose to come here and do that. And now you've got a lot more work to do to, to get it out there, don't you? In the coming kind of weeks, the world side. The new ones that will be online, and we will finally be able to set this problem because uh, now this is the first time, uh, this is the first screening, and uh, only the Kickstarter pages has had seen it. So we hope in the coming weeks to be able to, uh, to finally set it. Is this, this is a distinctly U.S. story and the rise of personal computers and sort of distinctly U.S. phenomenon. How do you think it's going to be viewed in the rest of the world? You, as U.S., has done the history of computing. So our idea was to make an international product, and uh, I think that this is it. This is a product that uh, we sell in the U.S. and in the U.S. The main market is here because we have done this. Let me ask you both a couple of questions about the way Jack comes across in the film in particular. Did you get did you get the interviews and the sort of candor and honesty from Jack that you expected? I and mean, he was always a very plain spoken, blunt guy when he talked about his career and building Commodore. Did you find him to still be that way when you encountered him? Sure. And his interview, I think that it's one of the best. And uh, it's very really long, so we have used just some part of it. But it's, it's, really, it's a really nice one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, I can say that it's mm, like a testament because he talked about for I think three hours or so. Wow. Yes. All right. Well, I think you've, you've passed the test, uh, the, the first test of the filmmaker, which is you want to make a second film, which is uh, a very great thing. Sure. And you've got, to talk about some of the others, if you get beyond the Atari and Bushel story, which you're um, to do. We, we have in mind that the Echo story must be the, the, the other story. It's the Echo story. Mm -hmm. So we are thinking, we are, writing a new script and we think that there are a lot of things that we can we can uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm expecting that to be something of a challenge if I end up narrating and being on the side of the competition. <laughs> because uh, one of the things Bruno had said was they chose me for my emotional involvement. You know, and I think there are times you can hear I'm such a Jack Jermaine fan. But there was uh, one instance where the line was Apple's floppy drive turned out to work really well. And they sent it back to me saying, don't 
say it's so sad. <laughs> Do you see yourself staying involved or no? Are you gonna? I'm gonna ask. Yeah. So if if everybody's not tired of hearing, I know I'm tired of hearing my voice after this. But uh, you know, if, if if people feel it's it's worth having, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I think that it's a great thing to have be that incident because he's adding very strong part. He's telling. He's using his experience and his emotions to mm -hmm. to tell this story. Mm -hmm. So we need, we absolutely. Need Though they had to correct my English a lot <laughs> and my French. And I do want to say that uh, the Bruno and the team have very graciously agreed to donate all of the footage of all of the interviews of this project to the Museum for our permanent archive, which is. <laughs> Designing a priority interface that made the floppy work and the printer work. 
and tap it for a copy art before we left. Copy art sold $100 computer, but they sold almost as many $150 copies in $200 prints. Yeah. It was the razor, razor blades. Those we intended to be the razor blades, and they worked. But don't give us credit. The people that bought the Commodore, it's $100. Never complained. You never saw one article in any press about paying almost twice as much for the first. Right? And, that, and that was our strength, was it, the, the Yankee ingenuity, if you want to call it that, the engineering and the closeness to the chip design, but then shipping it over and having it made for production or remade or re redone by Yash and yeah. uh, uh, Kubasan and some of those others yeah. and Altisan. Uh, yeah, we, nobody else did that. Nobody else produced over where we were producing computers. At well, time. remember they also strung our entire team up. Okay. Yeah, before my time. But, yeah. No, but we had, no, I'm saying, but at the end of the, the beginning of the big party, we did the big party. We got so ticked off that we did it, we threw us off. And uh, we went off and started our own stuff. Chuck, I thought you were terrific in the film. There's so many vintage picture, pictures of you. Do you. Are those your photographs? Do you have all those photographs of yourself over the course of your career, or were those taken from somewhere else? What? The photographs? In the film, yeah. The film? No, it didn't. When did you pick them up like that? I thought it was part of it. We bought that from Internet uh, Archives. Ah. Is that right? Because, no, I thought a lot of the film was not going to be here. Did you offer it was? We've got a lot of photographs. No, no, but you did a full, you, I did one of the series, right? Yes. And I think some of those are from there. there. Okay. Yeah, I think it's actually your Contribution. So do you feel you had a chance to extend the record tonight? And uh, what I just wanted is, I just wanted to make the point that uh, Jack was Jack was right about the masses, and we knew it. We'd actually done it. He asked us to do it, and we did it before we went on to do the MS Yeah. Our problem was we wanted to do the MS Chain. We did make the MS Chain. And by the way, Commodore would have been a lot bigger and a lot better company had they done it. Right. But anyway. Neither here nor there. Thank you for coming. It's good to be here. I want to again yeah. say, all right, is this is going to be for sale. How do I get copies? I think you've been counting some of them downstairs on the day of sale at some point. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I really do really want to get a copy of this because yeah, that's great. It's, uh, it really tells the story in a way that I can't anymore. Yeah. And without the 6502 album, I've had a career. So I owe everything that I ever did to you. Yeah. You and your team.